Hello everyone. I am going to make a presentation on safety instrumented system maintenance. This is a topic, basic topic. Video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe. Maintenance needs. It is very important to perform timely maintenance on safety instrumented system for safe, reliable operation of the plants. SIS maintenance is also auditable by external certifying agencies on safety systems applicable as per government regulations varies in each country. Because safety instrumented system is being deployed in the plants for the safety of plant equipment protection and people as well as the surrounding environments. So any violations with respect to the installation of such safety instrumented system is being auditable, questionable and various government have different uh, kind of strict regulations based on the region. Accordingly, all the respective plant owners or if it is a government agency, the government shall do the proper maintenance and keep their instruments and equipments in a safe operating condition. SIS maintenance is part of SIS life cycle which is responsible for operation and maintenance of the plant facilities involving safety instrumented system. We have seen about the life cycle starting from the scratch like evolving safety instrumented system by doing the LOPA, PHA study and all and making SIS design, SIS implementation, commissioning, validation testing, verification and operation and maintenance. So the maintenance is also part of a safety life cycle. Various components in SIS maintenance. We will go over the critical items which is important for the SIS maintenance. Installation testing. Testing which occurs immediately after construction. This testing include the below items. Grounds are installed and healthy. See we are discussing about the safety instrumented system wherein the sensor logic solver and uh, final elements they have been wired and powered by different power sources like 24 it may be 24 volts in some cases 110 volts etc so all these instruments at uh, whatever installed either in the plant site or in the control environment like a enclosure house uh, control room enclosure house they have to be properly grounded so that any fault coming in the instrument or uh, on the particular prior line, it can be grounded and any accidents due to wrong grounding can be avoided. So this is the first requirement. Second one is energy sources are connected and operational. So whenever the construction is happening, there are multiple agencies working in the plant and somebody will be laying the cable, some other contractor will be doing the termination, some other contractor will do the termination on the switch gear side. So, there could be a mistake. Some people, one contractor may do the cable laying and then just leave it. The second and third contractor has to come and do the connections. Probably it may be missing. So, these gaps has to be cleared, identified and then ensured that all the connections are done at both ends and uh, the tightness is checked and so that it is ready for operation. So, any debris material are removed. So, we are talking about the various sensors, sensors like uh, pressure, differential pressure and flow and all having a tapping from the piping part and then it is coming up to the instrument uh, sensor uh, level. That piping, the instrument tubing from the main piping up to the instrument may get choked due to any debris or any dirty materials coming inside the tubing. So those has to be cleaned up. So the instrument has been properly calibrated and next one is all the instruments which are put into service are calibrated and they are available for the required operating range. Supposing the pressure, uh, for example, a pressure transmitter is supposed to work from 0 to 10 kg per square centimeter and the design might have chosen a pressure transmitter for the range from 0 to 15 kg per square centimeter, giving a 
some margin on the higher side. So working range may be 0 to 10 kg per square centimeter, whereas the instrument range may be from 0 to 15 kg per square centimeter. So in this case, the instrument has to be calibrated for 0 to 10 kg per square centimeter. So it has to be uh, calibrated at the factory before dispatch and as well as when the instrument arrives at the plant facility, that also it has to be calibrated and verified for the proper operating range. Input output signal circuits are self tested for healthiness. This is uh, again the cable uh, loop check we call it. The cables has to be tested and ensured that the all the circuits are healthy, all the loop wiring, everything is healthy and connected properly. Next one is validation testing. This is the testing that occurs after construction and before startup. This is known as pre-startup test. This testing ensures that the system as a whole is operational and performs as intended. This is a complete loop test using the installed field sensors, logic solver and actual field equipment including valves and mechanical devices like example pumps, generators, etc. So validation testing means we have to simulate the conditions according to the actual process. It could be like if it is a fluid flow line, in some cases it may be a water, in some cases uh, if it is a gas fill line, it may be nitrogen or an uh, instrument tear that could be used and tested. So in this case the sensors will be tested according to the calibrated range and the logic inside the logic server will be doing the performing function. Finally the final element will be closing. So the complete loop starting from the sensor and operation of the logic solver and final element, the complete loop is uh, testing is known as validation testing. So this is a pre-requirement before any plant startup. This is known as pre-startup test. Okay. And main time to repair. This is another terminology which need to be known for the maintenance with people, which is very essential. Average time required to repair or proof test a particular instrument once a failure has been detected for multiple sensor configurations. This is the average repair time required in between failures. For example, assume that a repair part isn't available and must be special ordered. The repair part is unlikely to have arrived before the MTTR is reached. In this case, the production manager should be informed of this likelihood as soon as possible a special operation actions up to and including the plant shutdown may need to be taken up if twice the MTTR is exceeded. So in the meantime the repair is arrived as like for example 24 hours or 72 hours for example. So the maximum allowable if it is a 72 hours maximum allowable which is 3 days then the maximum allowable and time is up to 6 days only. So in this case Priority should be given at a very high level so that it has to be taken up to the production manager's knowledge so that any management actions will be in picture to speed up and restore the uh, instrument and then the safety instrument at some part. Proof testing. This is the testing that occurs after startup as part of ongoing maintenance. Written proof test procedures specific to that SIS and the sys component define what and how the sys components to be or to be tested as well as specifying who is qualified and what the required qualifications are to perform the tests so for the proof testing there shall be written proof test procedures and uh, the people who are all involved and in working in this safety instrumented system need to be certified as well to do the testing these tests may be more rigorous than similar preventive and predictive maintenance testing for similar pieces of equipment that are not part of SS. Similarly, we will have a pressure transmitter for the which is connected to the safety instrument system. On the same line, there will be another pressure transmitter which is connected to the basic process control system. A basic process control system connected transmitter may have a calibration cycle once in five years or certain something like this. Whereas the instrument which is on the safety instrumented system may be having only half of the period like two years, two and a half years, three years based on the sill level available for which it is installed. So meaning that uh, instruments on the safety instrumented system part will have a more rigorous testing as part of the proof testing.
So this part we are talking. Assuming this is uh, this is a piping, and wherein there are two valves. This is known as on-off valves. And in the piping there are pressure transmitters, measure, which is measuring the pressure of the process flowing inside the piping. And all the pressure signals are being connected to the logic solver. Sys logic solver, which is known as safety instrument system logic solver. And the logic solver senses the signal from the three transmitters and this is in the two out of three voting mode. So whenever any two transmitters going for a higher pressure and gives a signal to the logic solver, then it will perform an action and give a command to close the valve. There are either A, if it, is, uh, it may be numbered as uh, A, B, C and all. It could be A, B, A, C or B, C. So in either combination, whenever it is going high, then the logic solver will put an action make an action to close these valves. This is why this is known as 2 out of 3 voting. Any 2 going above the limits will give a signal for the valve to act. Maintenance. The plant shall maintain records that certify the proof test or inspections were completed as required. These records shall include the following information as a minimum. Description of the test and the inspections performed. Date of the test and inspection. So, what kind of test is being performed is uh, has been performed has to be updated in the record. Person name, designation, who performed the test and inspection, serial number of the instrument, system tested, for example, the loop number, tag number, equipment number, and safety instrument function, SIF number, results of the test and inspection, for example, as found and as left conditions. As an example, if it is a 0 to 10 kg pressure transmitter, when it is calibrated and is taken for the proof test. At the beginning, the same 0 to 10 kg pressure has to be applied and checked in the transmitter or the sensor part whether it is responding, whether the 0 from the calibrator gives the 0 reading from the sensor or, and the 10 kg per square meter gives the 10 kg per square meter reading in the sensor. There could be some small error. Instead of 0, it may go to 0 0.5. And 10 it may go to 9.5 or 10.1, 10.2 like that. So if it is if there is any such error, then the pressure sensor has to be calibrated according to the predefined range, which is a design range. So the maintenance the technicians has to note down the actual reading in the beginning, and which is known as as found reading, and the calibrated value, which is which will be the as left condition. These are all the points to be taken care in the maintenance. Thank you.